Hello and welcome to this video comparing copper and aluminium wire for bonsai. If you have looked through older bonsai books, you will see references to copper wire specifically. Newer books will either have a more general reference to wire, with some specifying aluminium. This transition is part of a larger economical issue with copper, an increasingly expensive metal but aluminium is still relatively affordable. There is an argument from some bonsai purists and older practitioners that copper is the best, if not only option for bonsai, whilst less conservative or younger individuals may say aluminium is viable. Of course, there is a grey area in between. This video will compare the two and examine the differences. First, a little chemical and physics background which will be important later. Aluminium and copper sit near each other on the periodic table. Aluminium is considered a post-transition metal, whilst copper is a transition metal. This means that aluminium is slightly less reactive. Aluminium has about two times the heat capacity of copper and is substantially less dense. Both of these metals can bend and flex, but the important feature for bonsai is annealing temperatures. Copper can be annealed at roughly 550 degrees Celsius, or just over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, if you have yet to use a civilized unit of measurement. Unlike copper, aluminium has an annealing point near its melting point, which is 660 degrees Celsius or 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit. For these reasons and availability, aluminium is generally cheaper. It is also more widely dispersed, which means it's cheaper to extract from the ground. The final point to mention is the structure of both metals. They both create a fairly tight-knit lattice crystal. This forms into cubes which stack together better than spheres or crystals do. Copper wire forms a cube about 10% smaller than aluminium. Right now, this information may not seem important, but it will be relevant shortly. Now for the wire. Aluminium wire is generally a dull silvery mess, but most recent products have been treated in some way to make the outside dark and unobtrusive. This is useful if your tree is being displayed in some way. As a result, most wire is either a dark brown to black or light brown in colour. You can feel the weight difference between copper and aluminium wire. Whether you feel that in your pocket or hand is a matter of circumstance. Unfortunately, neither wire can really be recycled as the extruding process is difficult for large or long pieces. Because somebody will mention it. Yes, display trees should have no wire, but not everyone is perfect and neat wiring can easily be overlooked if you are not paying attention. Moving on to a comparison with aluminium wire. Here are three gauges, 1, 2 and 4 millimeter or 0 0.04, 0 0.08, and 0.18 inches. Three reasonably common sizes for working on branches throughout your tree. These are tested in several ways. The two that will be shown in this video include how many times the wire can bend before it becomes work hardened, and how many times the wire bends before it breaks. The results for the aluminium are surprising. It has a reasonably straightforward and predictable curve, with an average of 13 bends, 5 and 3 for the gauges going from thickest to smallest. Meanwhile, the rate at which it breaks is inversely related to that. Copper wire is a little bit different, and the same tests were performed. The results are as follows. It took 31 repetitions for the 4mm copper wire to start bending further down 
from the pivot point. It took 24 repetitions for the 2.5 and 16 for the 0.9. You can see from this, on average, the copper wire has a slightly better performance in how much it bends before it breaks and how many times it can be bent. You may also wonder why these two metals? And as an example, here is a piece of brass wire. Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, which makes it resilient to the weather and tarnish, but also becomes brittle. And this is why it has a short range of motion before it begins to crystallize and become hard to move. And this is the same issue seen in things like steel wire. For most other metals, using it in its most basic format to simply get the wire on the tree and begin rotating everything into the right positions would cause the wire to harden and break that much sooner. Both aluminium and copper avoid this issue to a certain extent. Based on what you see here, the two metals perform differently and you might favour aluminium as it has a slightly better cost to performance ratio. On the other hand, it does not harden as much when worked, and this is part of that crystallization process, where the cubes all form into the right shape and position. This means that over time, copper will hold more weight better, but it will initially be far more expensive, which makes it an ideal metal to use for trees that require long-term wiring. There is one more factor to be aware of with bonsai wire. Both aluminium and copper are metals. Where they sit in the periodic table can have an effect on your trees. For instance, aluminium can actually make soil or potting mix more alkaline as it breaks down. And this is great for azaleas and roses, which prefer slightly more alkaline soils. If you are watering your trees with anything that inadvertently degrades the wire, this could be important. Conversely, copper is a surprisingly biologically active metal, and some species react poorly to it. Whether that is exposure through the roots, wire cutting into the branches, or something else. Overall, each of these wire types has a purpose, but the general trend remains to use aluminium wire as it is cheaper and more readily available. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.